in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed when you say Joshua Selman from an earthly standpoint, you are not wrong. You are not wrong. But when it has to do with the prophetic implication, if you say Joshua Selman and stop there, uh -uh. the demons that challenged the sons of Skiva were not doubting their names. They did not see an attachment to the name. this consciousness listen I, 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 I apologize if I sound arrogant but I'm sharing with you this is the construct of my life believe me with all humility the only limitations in my life are the voice of God and process not darkness I don't see mountains in my life the only thing that limits me is the voice of God because of my eternal allegiance to his voice and then the law of time and seasons that there are things that just happen at the sequence of time but to chicken out and to back down because of limitations is an insult to the name that I represent and don't think I'm just making empty noise with all humility I've proven this is one thing to talk and be a lecturer it's another thing for your life to be a living epistle of the things that you say the things that we have seen the things that we have heard the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we preach hallelujah praise the name of the Lord yes. the consciousness of your oneness you look ordinary your face may not have changed man of God but I want you to go back on Sunday this Sunday not next Sunday climb your pulpit all of you don't go alone make sure that if you go alone you will be disgraced you will say a lot of things and share the grace and leave as if you went from a funeral you go with the consciousness remember together as you open that Bible together as you open that Bible together, you hear in your spirit, there's someone called John. Don't fear. Together. Together. Hear me. If you are together, why are you the only one taking the shame? Why is your ego so sensitive that you are so shame conscious? If I am walking with God, if we fail, it's two of us that will go with the shame. He cannot take the glory while I take the shame. Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. So God defends you for his name's sake. How do I gather such an intelligent people and come and tell you the power of God will move? I'm seeing 14. You, I hope you know human beings are not animals. you look at a man of God anointed with his life of prayer and fasting and tell him that he's going to step into a new time what kind of disrespect is that except you know what you are standing upon otherwise you will make a fool of yourself he will not suffer my food to be moved I carry your presence everywhere who am I your mind is so full of me, mortal man, awesome God, mortal man. I'm just a, but you are the awesome. Listen, Moses said, don't send us alone. 
if your presence will not go with us i don't care what information i know what it means to waste my time i wasted my time for 40 years without your presence i will not repeat it again if your presence will not go with us do not send let them call it delay but let me remain where your presence is i rather mark time with you than to go without you please sit down number three ah someone is shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief in the name of jesus can anything good come out of nazareth can anything good come out of your village satan has been bullying you with that mindset let's do number three i'm hearing people laugh in the spirit this is what i'm no 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 no, no. i'm not talking of right now by the spirit of god that the power of god i started hearing it just as i went behind like the power of god coming on someone and beginning to laugh in the spirit a holy laughter it's not something you do mechanical it's by the spirit this is what is going to happen here now and when it happens i will tell you the meaning of it it's not just that people are just shouting and bursting into laughter for no reason you see these are signs and wonders in the spirit there are messages a sign points to something if you are going to a babin saloon and you see a sign it tells you you are close there and it directs you are we together the bible says the shouts of joy shall not depart from the tent of the righteous when people begin to have that kind of spiritual or holy laughter as we call it it is not just um a, a, some kind of uh, you know charismatic gibberish no 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 the implication there listen carefully the implication to that kind of experience is that there is a message from heaven and God is speaking to us this used to happen in the meetings of Papa Hagen in the 60s and the 70s where by the Spirit of God the Bible said laughter do it good like medicine it's not just this is not some mechanical thing these people are intelligent they will not come and be wasting their time like this Parus Kadiba A ministry of signs and wonders. Because there are men and women God is bringing into this dimension of grace. In that laughter, there is healing flowing. In that laughter, there is victory being established. How do you stand before God's people and begin to call forth laughter? This is the realm of confidence I want to bring you into. You can fail alone, but not when you are with Him. Two of you do not fail. Halish ka parakus kade banakus krakata beleke paratos kavrates kabila shai saba basada kata braska de balia. There are three men of God I'm seeing. There is a healing anointing. That is resting on you you are a man of god three of you i just saw that glory resting on three men of god drink of that wine let that river flow to you let that river flow to you let it quicken your spirit man you will begin to walk in superior dimensions help them please in the name of jesus the christ of god you carry that grace you carry that anointing for signs and for wonders. Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. Take it higher for me, please. This life that I have is a life of casting. This life that I have 
surgery that is happening to your spirit man you will relinquish a natural life and embrace a divine life in experience in experience in experience where your life becomes a sign and a wonder not because you are a preacher no no this is not about being a preacher this is not about being a reverend, an apostle, a prophet. No, this is about being a partaker of his divine nature and revealing that implication here and now. He says that men will see your light and glorify your father. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Again, I'm tempted to thank his lordship, the bishop, for putting, as far as I'm concerned, this is beyond just a conference. This is an apostolic and a prophetic convergence within the Northeast. This is what I believe, that God is giving the Northeast a chance to, by the Spirit, be repositioned. To be part of God's global prophetic agenda. That the role that we have to play from this region. And God has placed it as a mandate. Hear me, I'm speaking prophetically. This is beyond just a program by the Anglican communion. I am telling you, the jealousy of God has rested upon this convergence. It is a clarion call. It has become a prophetic summit. Where God summons men within a region. To train, to equip, to mature, to empower and to release them like quivers that come from a man. Like the foxes of Samson, releasing them with fire and grace and enlightenment and power. Please be seated. Let's do number three. Mm, the waters is already been stirred in this place. I know when the fountain of the spirit is stirred. Let me do justice to number three and four. And then we allow his majesty to do that which brings glory to Jesus. Number three. What is the basis of our walking in victory in this kingdom? We have access to the Holy Spirit. Hmm. The third factor that governs the believer's victory is your access to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. John 16, begin our reading from verse 7. Hmm. The spirit of prophecy is resting on people. The spirit of prophecy is resting on people. It's an impartation service. The spirit of prophecy is resting on people the spirit of prophecy oh like it happened in the prophecy of joel it shall come to pass he says 
that I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Did you not read it in the Bible? Men and women, male and female, upon all, his spirit is coming upon them. Hallelujah. John 16, 7. Jesus is speaking. Jesus is speaking. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. And then it says, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8. And when he is come, the Bible says, just a moment so that they walk on, on the screen. I want to read it and quote it. When he's come, let me use, let me just get the scripture so that I quote it verbatim for you. John 16, it says, when he's come, he will reprove the world of righteousness, of judgment, of sin of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not, verse 10, of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged verse 12 now i have many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it oh i like this when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come and he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you the holy spirit is the holy ghost spirit of the living god is the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings is the Holy Ghost seal of the age to come? It's changing everything in obedience. Hear me. The Holy Spirit is beyond the wind, the Holy Spirit is beyond the dove. The Holy Spirit is beyond fire. He's beyond oil. He's beyond candles. All of those things are just expressions of Him. The Holy Spirit is God. Send by Jesus to the believer to help guarantee your arriving and your living a victorious life. It was Jesus Himself who continued to beckon on the disciples who would later be apostles and he told them that they needed the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a man Jesus could not be victorious alone it was by the empowerment of the Spirit it was the Holy Spirit that made him to become the Christ Christos the anointed of God how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power and the Bible says he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him ladies and gentlemen please hear me show me an ordinary man no matter how weak you are be introduced to the ministry of the Holy Spirit I show you a sign and a wonder that is emerging the Holy Spirit is not for preachers the Holy Spirit is not just for men and women of God he said for this promise is unto you and your children your children's children even as many as are far of whom the Lord will call you see the ministry of the Holy Spirit is beyond tongues and prophecy the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God he has 
a fourfold assignment to believers number one his assignment to you as a believer is to provide guidance number two to provide direction number three to bring you revelation and understanding number four he's responsible for empowerment the holy spirit when you ignore his ministry you are bankrupt of revelation you cannot be guided you cannot be directed you cannot access revelation illumination by the spirit you can read the bible without him and all you will see is a plethora of confusing statements it is the holy spirit who takes the veil out of the scripture and now connects the dots so that it ministers life hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 I'm reminded of a vision that I had years ago when God was revealing to me my mandate and my call and my assignment I saw an endless sea of people have shared this countless times and yet it never becomes old in my mind because of the impact that this vision had upon my spirit I'm standing at an elevated position and I'm looking at a whole generation of people crying and languishing a crowd just like this only that it is in multiplied proportions millions of people across several races this is what I saw listen and then those who were in front the vision was zoomed and they came and they were crying and i said why the tears and they said there is no food and there is no water and i said who is the cause and they pointed at me i said no i'm not that wicked to rob you of food and water but i was afraid because it looked like there were some people who wanted to harm me out of anger and whatever but I made up my mind that I rather perish than to allow these people to cry as soon as I opened the door there was a giant gray bearded man who stood and he stretched his mighty hand and he said give me your hands now I know it was the Holy Spirit he said give me your hands and I brought my tiny hands and placed it upon his hands and he said I will walk with you and we began to move jumping from one place to another I saw myself doing things I ordinarily would not be able to do because the hand of the mighty one when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible becomes possible when he holds your hands everything becomes possible when he holds your The Holy Spirit, the one who helps ordinary men to become mighty. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? The administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. If it does not arrive, power cannot arrive. Ye shall receive power. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 not just when you are saved alone the power to be a witness comes after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you he says and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth when they were threatened in Acts chapter 4 they came together in their company and began to pray and say now oh lord behold their threatenings and he says grant unto your servant that signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy son the bible says the place shook and they were filled with the holy spirit and they went to preach with boldness isaiah chapter 11 talks about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit as we have come to know theologically speaking. Hallelujah. 
Number one is the spirit of dominion, the spirit of the Lord. Number two, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. Number three, the spirit of might. Am I right on that? And then the spirit of counsel. Finally, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Seven dimensions of his spirit broken into four. Hallelujah. How do you do ministry without the Holy Spirit? No. He's the one who convicts sinners. No matter your oratory, it cannot translate a man from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Men can listen to you and say, wow, this is a smart preacher. Very intelligent. I see that you studied well. And it stops there. It is the Holy Spirit who translates your sermon from a lecture to life. Regardless the Greek and the Hebrew that we interface our preachings with, it is only the Holy Spirit that helps the word of God to convict men and to bring them into understanding. Preachers, don't preach without him. Businessmen, don't do business without him. Parents, don't raise your children without him. It will be a risk. You will be raising trouble on its way to happen. Lecturers, all walks of life, it does not matter who you are and what you do the Holy Spirit is an eternal blessing to all men given to all men not to preachers given to all men not just to businessmen some of you are aware of his ministry but you have not received his ministry the third reason why we can stand tall to say we will live the victorious life in truth is because he has given us access to the Holy Spirit let me do a quick recap then I give you the final point number one the consciousness of the fact that God is the all-powerful God number two the consciousness that you have been made today in Christ a partaker of his divine nature the implication being that you are one with Christ and you have a positional advantage you have been made a beneficiary of his victory in Christ as he is today victorious exalted so are we in this life the key phrase for that statement is together do not forget this raise together cause to walk together to preach together to walk together and then now number three we have been given the advantage of the holy spirit guiding us showing us things to come let me give you a little story to help you appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Many years ago, before the internet became really strong in Africa, and before we embraced at the infancy of social media platforms, the Holy Spirit came to me one night in worship and prayer, and he told me, he said in the future, people are going to hear teachings for free and will not buy in tapes and CDs again. This internet you see, it says, I want you to take your teachings as raw as they are. Do not sell them. Put them on the internet and my angel will take it to the nations. This is how ministry will be. When he said that, it will be suicidal for you to ignore tape ministry and all of that. That was the time of, remember there's something called rechargeable lantern? Rechargeable, uh, what they call it now? Remember that thing? Yes, that has light and has a radio too. That you go to pray and then you slot in your radio. That was when he came. And I said, Lord, I believe you. Today, a major reason by the privilege of God's grace for the visibility, the influence and the impact he has brought is because of that one instruction. The Holy Spirit can tell you one thing to do. One thing to do. One thing to do one thing to do it was one miracle that God used to announce me those days in Zaria many of you who have listened to me you've heard the miracle about somebody whose spine was broken and shredded completely this one was left for dead they were waiting for a consultant to come from India and to try to do a delicate surgery if perhaps less than a 50-50 chance for survival then phones just came out, you know, all kinds of phones. And then 
I remember when I was told, I said I would pray for him to confess. I'm not sure I, as I, I don't know if I knew a miracle like that would happen. And I remember in the night or early hours of the morning, I was in prayer and it was time to call that gentleman laced with all kinds of neck collars, bracelets and things to hold him. And he was at the other end of the phone. And I picked the phone and I talked to this gentleman and you could see that he was in pains. And I told him, I said, I want to bring you the life of God and to minister to you. I don't know if I saw the guy physically, maybe I will have the faith to have prayed for him. Thank God for phones. Because I prayed for him. True story. Verified story. As I prayed a simple prayer that was less than a minute or two. And the next thing I told him, move your neck and check yourself. And it was a shock and a wonder. This gentleman began to scream. And the only thing I remember was he removed the next bracelet as he was telling me. And he ran to his mother's room. And as soon as he opened the door, the only thing I had before the phone went off was a woman shouting, Jesus. And that was it. Listen. By the next day, people came to gather. You know how someone dies and people come to greet. That was how people came to the house to verify if this was just some gibberish by people stage managing miracles or this was true. When I saw the gentleman myself and he had done the second x-ray, that miracle shook the teaching hospital. If many of you who know the teaching hospital in Zaria, I began to get calls from nurses and doctors and consultants. There's somebody who has a fibroid somewhere. We heard about you and what happened. One genuine, verifiable miracle can advance, can announce you in ways that no poster, no social media publicity can announce. I can tell you this. I'm not talking of miracles and manifestations that whether they are sure or not sure or something you are saying that you cannot defend. No. It's a risk to live your life like that. Exaggerating miracles and telling lies will only disgrace you and demean your sense of integrity. If it did not happen, it did not happen. It can happen. But when it happens, it can. That is why miracles that happen in the presence of people is powerful. Because they see it there and then. Hallelujah. I said all this to let you know that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that when he dwells with you and is in you, he's able to turn your life around and you become literally, you know how an MTN mask is, that you place it in one place and it affects everybody within that territory. That is what the Holy Spirit can make you become. Everybody say the Holy Spirit. One more time, say the Holy Spirit. If you care to learn, let me give you quickly three keys to building intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Number one, a dedicated life of prayer, even in the Spirit. A dedicated life of prayer, not circumstantial prayer, not once in a while prayer, a dedicated life of prayer. Number two, a consistent atmosphere of intense worship. A consistent atmosphere of intense worship. Number three, which like I said yesterday is one of the greatest ingredients in securing intimacy with the Holy Spirit. A hunger and a desperation for his presence that is characterized by brokenness. A hunger and a desire for his presence backed up by a life of brokenness. Oh, I need you, oh God. I need you in my life. And then of course, the study of the word enhances your knowledge. But in truth, it is only when he arrives that you understand the word. You practice consistent prayer. Not just need-driven prayer. Prayer for edification and growth. Submit yourself to intense atmospheres of worship. And consistently live a broken and surrendered life. And you have secured the keys that attract rich dimensions of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now let me give you 
for our discussion tonight the final key that becomes the basis for the believers victory one being that oh, God is the all-powerful God two being the implication of our being partakers of this divine life number three the rich ministry of the paraclete the Holy Spirit number four I like this the fourth basis for our being victorious in the kingdom is that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises second Peter chapter 1 second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 we have been given exceeding great and precious promises he did not just give us the consciousness of his might he did not just give us the divine life he did not just give us the Holy Spirit he also left us thank you very much with great exceeding great and precious promises I read and you follow grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ read verse 3 with me if you are a Christian ready please read according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 whereby I given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust we have been given exceeding great Peter calls them and precious promises what are these promises I have taught here that the Bible essentially contains three things if you recall my teaching number one the Bible contains promises God's commitment to the believer number two the Bible contains principles a revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom number three the Bible contains prophecies a roadmap into the future are we together so every time you open your Bible you are interacting with three dimensions of realities number one promises number two principles number three prophecies let me repeat one last time number one promises number two principles number three prophecies please listen to me as mighty as God is the only basis of his commitment to the believer is his word God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the jurisdiction of his word are we together that means every reality that the word of God does not allow God will not do because he himself has submitted himself he has brought his name in submission to his word are we together that he has exalted his word even above his office as mighty as God is his word is the jurisdiction of his dealings and his relationship with the believer so every time you want to commit God to your life blindly saying God come to my rescue is not a manifestation of faith that translates to victory there must be a scriptural backing God only does what he has said God does not do what you want he only does what you want that is consistent with what he has said look at this scripture with me everybody Genesis 21 verse 1 Genesis 21 verse 1 we're going to read verse 1 please read it as loud as you can if you are a Christian are you ready one to read and the Lord visited Sarah uh-huh stop 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 the Lord visited Sarah not as she wanted not as she cried for the visitation only came as he had said let's finish the reading and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken God only visits as he has said he only does as he has spoken 
so if you cannot find what he has said and what he has spoken there is no visitation and there is no doing is someone learning so if i want to be healthy merely saying god forbid i will not be sick that is just you comforting yourself sickness will ravage you as if it's not aware you are a christian there has to be a basis what did god say concerning your health hallelujah are we together no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick that becomes a basis by his stripes we were healed that becomes a basis if the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will quicken vitalize your mortal body that now becomes your basis on the strength of this scripture you can now declare health how about longevity god forbid even death knows it will not come you will be surprised that you wake up and find out you are dead out of this world in another dimension what is the basis of your longevity number one the bible says i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord number two children obey your parents in the lord that it will be well with you and that you might enjoy length of days are we together number three on account of wisdom wisdom has with it length of days is that in your bible number four the bible says that ye shall serve me and i shall bless your bread and your water take away sickness away from you and that the fullness of your days you will fulfill now you gather those exceeding great and precious promises that is what you take to war in the place of prayer praying without scripture is praying amiss i repeat praying without scripture is praying amiss no matter the kind of energy you are dissipating the basis of god hearing you is not your lamentation the basis of god hearing you is you are bringing his word to him your prayer is only as fruitful as it is word compliant hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain